Right from the beginning of this case, the government was cocky and feeling superior to R. Kelly and were therefore asking for way too much in terms of what the court should decide when it came to offering them ground to abuse R. Kelly's rights and freedoms. We saw this happen during the jury selection process in New York which saw jurors who promised to prejudice R. Kelly qualified without question, we saw the Bureau of Prisons illegally access and share his restricted prison communications with the public, and among even more scenarios like this which we won't break down today, the fundamental was when the government decided to place charges basing on the infamous docuseries which should have never been the case. You just don't press charges on someone because they were featured in a TV show. The primary of all government excesses however started when they demanded that R. Kelly's bond which even failed to materialize leading to financial loss by the issuer be increased. The government prosecutor's argument was that considering more charges had been placed in New York and in Minnesota, the bond money needed to be increased as though to suggest R. Kelly becomes an even greater flight risk just because more fresh charges in more states had come up. Meaning they were not only moving to have his bail application rejected, but also to increase the bond amount. Take a look. Nicole Blank Becker on behalf of Mr. Kelly. Rayad Shalabi, R A E D S H A L A B I, on behalf of Mr. Kelly. Steve Greenberg, on behalf of Mr. Kelly. All right, in the record will indicate Mr. Kelly's present in the courtroom. Uh, before we start, I just want to thank the uh, Marshal Service uh, for accommodating the court today. Uh, after the last court day, I received a call from the Marshal's office indicating that they would. Uh, would accommodate the court and have Mr. Kelly brought over on each and every court date. So I wanted to thank the Marshal Service for that accommodation to this court. All right, with that, uh, where are we at first as far as discovery, or what, what do you have for discovery, we did tender today the bulk of the documents that will come from the Chicago Police Department. There are some materials that are outstanding from the Chicago Police Department, as well as um, some 417 materials from the lab. And we have a disk of the 2002 file that we're going to copy and tender. So I believe on the next court date we should be complete. Okay. The 2002 file, meaning the court file or everything? Are the reports. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Then what do you have as far as discovery? Any issues regarding discovery that you want to bring to my attention? Before we get to the bond issues, what these motions? None at this point, Judge. I mean, we're obviously still going through all of the materials, and with the other uh, two federal cases that are out there, we've been inundated with the materials. So, okay. We're going through all of it. All right. Uh, I guess the next issue that we have is the uh, first, I'll deal with the state's motion, uh, which they filed prior to the last court date to uh, increase uh, Mr. Kelly's bond. Uh, the state filed their motion. The uh, defense filed a response to the motion. Um, do you have anything in, in addition to what you set forth in your motion to increase the bond? Not really in addition, Judge. Just the <coughs> fact that when the original bonds were set on the four cases, the, um, the court that was setting bond wasn't aware of all the other charges that have now since been filed, um, both in the Northern District here in Chicago, um, the uh, dis Eastern District of New York, and then also up in um, Minnesota. And so I wanted to make the court aware that the defendant has now been charged with um, sex charges, multiple additional sex counts, um, in all these jurisdictions. And that should affect what the actual bond is being set in this case. And that wasn't known to the court when we did our bond hearing. Okay. All right. Mr. So, Greenberg? Judge, the first thing I would indicate, uh, although it's not in our written motion, is it's not verified. There's no uh, verified motion to increase bond, which the statute requires. Okay. The second thing is there's no legal basis that's cited by the uh, prosecutors to increase the bond. The mere fact that someone may have been charged with other cases in other jurisdiction is not a basis to increase bond. It's not a basis under the statute. It's not a basis under uh, the case law. They don't argue that he's an increased flight risk. They don't argue that he's an increased danger. They don't argue any reason in their motion why bond should be increased. Uh, the, the bond in those other matters has been addressed by the judges in those matters. As the court knows, there's currently, he's being detained on both of the federal cases. Uh, we intend to ask the courts to reconsider those orders. We filed a motion in the Northern District, and we're filing a motion in the Eastern District of New York for that. The, um, should the court, should the federal court modify those orders, 
I fully expect that he will be put on some kind of house arrest, electronic monitoring, GPS, or something like that, which also means that he's not a flight risk. He doesn't have a passport. He's not a danger to others. There's nothing in these other indictments or in these other allegations to show that he um, that that he's a danger to others. All of the allegations uh, predate these charges, predate the bringing of these charges by years and decades. I would point out also, Judge, that when the state added charges before your honor, they didn't ask that the bond be increased. Uh, the fact is that Mr. Kelly has never missed a court date, never missed one on this case, never missed one on the prior case uh, that he had, voluntarily turned himself in originally on these charges, voluntarily came to court when, when the charges were upgraded against him. And there's simply no legal basis to increase the bond in this case. Okay. Any response? I would just say that a lot of what counsel just said is based on speculation about what could happen if his bond were changed in, a, in one of the other courts. And so that's a lot of speculation. I would also point out that part of his charges um, here in the Northern District of Illinois include the fact that um, the defendant is accused of having um, influenced the witnesses on, the, on that case, that first trial. And lastly, I would say that the defendant does have additional charges, and that absolutely is appropriate to bring before this court to ask that his bond be increased. He does have additional charges. Okay. All right. Look, as a practical matter, he's being held now, no bail, in the Eastern District of New York and in the Northern District of Illinois. Uh, unless Mr. Greenberg can convince both of those courts that he should be released on bond, Mr. Uh, Kelly's going to remain in custody. Uh, so as far as a motion to increase the bond, uh, I don't believe it's appropriate at this particular point in time. That being said, if there's a change in circumstances, in other words, if you're able to convince both of those federal courts in those different jurisdictions that he should be released on bond or some type of, uh, some type of uh, conditions regarding release, if you want to bring that motion to increase the bond back before the court, I think that would be appropriate. But at this particular time, it's kind of a moot point. Um, the bond that was set originally uh, in this matter by the, uh, I'm assuming the bond court judge, or maybe from the grand jury, I'm not sure. Bond court. Bond court? Okay. Uh, I thought uh, when the uh, case first came before me for arraignment that the bond was adequate based upon the fact that there's four cases, there's 250,000 D bond on each one of the cases. Uh, plus pretrial services, which I thought was appropriate based upon uh, the information that I had regarding Mr. Kelly. I still believe that's true. That being said, I'm going to deny the motion at this particular point in time. If there's a change in circumstances and he is somehow released from custody and you want to bring it back before me, I'll, I'll take a look at it then, okay? Along that, uh, as long as we're talking about that, there was an order issued regarding pretrial services. In light of the fact that Mr. Kelly's in custody, uh, I'm going to vacate that order here in Cook County. And then, like I said, we'll take a look at it again if he is released on bond. Okay?